Hey, what's up all you addicts out there? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today we're here with guide Eric Swanson. And we're gonna be talking about how to fish and catch springers with 360 flashers and Brad Superbaits. So that's coming up at you right now. All right, everyone, before we get started, if you guys can do me a huge favor and smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are liking these tutorial videos and you want us to continue making them, we need your help. Hit that thumbs up button and help us get out to more people on YouTube. And now, before we get started on this yes. setup, Eric, introduce yourself, tell people out there who might not know who you are, Absolutely. what you do, and all that stuff. Absolutely, guys. So I'm Eric Swanson with Eric Swanson Outdoors. I live here in Oregon. I fish the Columbia, the Lower Willamette, basically the whole Northwest Oregon area. So if you guys want to get out and you know learn these tactics firsthand, um, you can go to my website, Eric Swanson Outdoors, and you know uh, click on the little book a trip tab and uh, get out here and do some great fishing with me. So, And we'll have a link down below to you guys if you guys want to check out Eric Swanson. But yes. yeah, I highly recommend it. Definitely get out and get fishing with this guy. You'll learn a lot and I'm sure you'll catch some fish. Absolutely. But this is a hot button subject. This is, it is. I, I see about it all the time. I see people asking about it. So let's let's just show people what you do when you're yes. out here targeting springers with these 360s. Absolutely, guys. So the first and foremost thing, guys, is having the proper rod, reel, and line combo to fish effectively. So. These 360s, if you guys have ever fished them before, you know they do like the pulsing, thumping heartbeat action. So having a good, long, softer rod is really important to see that thump of the uh, uh, 360 so you know it's working effectively. So I prefer the 10 and a half foot Okuma Guide Select Classic with the Okuma Low Pro Line Counter Reel. I like to run the 65 pound high vis Tough Line. Really super abrasion resistant, it lasts a long time. Um, when we're using heavy leads, fighting big fish, it really works well. All right guys, coming down here to the business end. When we're fishing for Spring Chinook with these 360s, I like to run a dropper line. You know, sometimes in the fall when we're fishing more suspended, I'll attach my weight directly to the slider. But in the spring, oftentimes I'm getting somewhat close to the bottom. So I like to run about a 12 inch dropper on one of these VIP line locks. And what's really important guys about the VIP line lock is you're trolling these a little bit faster than normal. Sometimes your swivels don't allow everything to spin right and you can get line twist. So this line lock helps not get your main line all spun up. So really, really crucial part of this whole setup guys is having an apparatus like this VIP line lock to help keep your main line twist free. Next thing, Brad's six speed bead chain. I like to run 24 inches of 130 pound mono what that allows is if we get a tangle, a couple rods get tangled up, we get it snagged on the bottom, we hope that our 20 pound leader will break and we'll get our flasher set up back. So 130 pound, 24 inches, really, really effective. Down to another six speed bead chain, dual lock snap. Next thing is our short bus flashers. These things are awesome. They have a ton of great different color combinations. You can dang your pick any color you want. Going down, we have another dual lock snap to a ball bearing swivel. And since everything is spinning, I like to run an extra bead chain off of a dual lock snap. And what I'll do is when I pre-tie these, I'll pre-tie these guys with the bead chain. So all I have to do is open the dual lock snap, just like this. Pick one of these off my leader spooler, my leader board, attach it just like that. If we break one off accidentally, or you know, catch a fish and line gets frayed, easy attachment. The number one question guys I get about this whole entire setup is leader length, okay? What people forget is that these 360 flashers, they give movement to your bait, whatever it may be. So what you wanna make sure to have it close enough to where your bait is getting the influence from the flasher. So leader length guys is super important. What I like to run is 30 pound mono and that allows your bait to work properly behind the 360. When I put this in the water guys and show you how it works you're going to really understand why it's important to have your super bait close to your flasher. As this thing is spinning once a rotation it's kicking your brad's cup plug about eight inches triggering that reaction bite guys. Remember when you're fishing this technique it's all a reaction bite. So 30 inches of 30 pound mono down to my Brad's cut plug. This happens to be the kokanee cut plug. 
Alrighty guys, so Brad's makes a series of different size cut plugs. They have the original cut plug, the mini cut plug, and the kokanee cut plug. I like to run the full size guys, mainly in the fall. Bigger fish, more aggressive, we're trolling faster. In the springtime, we're trolling a little bit slower, you know, a little bit smaller fish. So I prefer the minis and the kokanee cut plugs for springers. But I do encourage you guys to go out there and try all the different sizes because there are days where the bigger ones might outfish the smaller ones. So always go out there and try everything. Don't just take my word for it. But in my opinion, these are what I like to run. So always go out there and make, make your own opinion and make your own stories. So, Alrighty guys, so since I prefer these Kokanee cut plugs, I'm gonna show you guys the proper hook placement, size, beads, and of course the cut plug. So guys, I like to run two one aught Mustad hooks. I like to run about a quarter inch spacing between them. It seems like that's about the proper spacing when these fish come up and bite. I want that trailer hook to be back there just a little bit further. So two one aught Mustad hooks tied about a quarter inch apart. Then I like to run five five millimeter beads. And how that works is they bump just like that and it puts those hooks right back to where those fish are gonna bite. And you always wanna make sure guys your line runs through the belly the left hole these things spin like a top all righty guys so now i'm going to show you how to properly pack one of these brad's kokanee cup plugs with our favorite bait which is tuna so what you guys don't want to do is you don't want to over pack it because they have these holes placed in here for a specific reason and that's to let this bait slowly leach out if you over pack it the bait won't have any room to leach out so always start out real lightly something like that and what's really nice about this guys is you can open your can of tuna, put it in your container here, and then every you know 30, 45 minutes, open your can up, pack it, repack it, rejuice it, close it. So super easy, and always make sure that you underpack it versus overpack it. They fish so much better. You don't want it heavy, full of you know, packed full of heavy tuna. It won't spin right. So just pack it lightly in there, just like so. Make sure to always put your rubber band back on there. Just like that. That's a perfectly packed Brad's Kokanee cut plug for springer fishing. Alrighty guys, so now that I got to the spot I want to fish, let's support a 360 with our Brad's cut plug. So, bait, cut plug, flasher, lead. Drop everything in guys, don't throw it all in and you know, it tends to kind of make a mess. So, lower it in nicely. What I recommend guys is always reel up, take a look at your setup, before you drop it in, you know, oftentimes what'll happen is a hook will get wrapped around your weight, and then as everything spins, it'll wrap up. So it's always a good thing to drop everything in, take a look at it, make sure it didn't get tangled before you drop it in. And one thing I really want to stress, guys, is choosing the right amount of weight for this setup. As you can see, our 360 in the water, it has a lot of drag. So if you have too light of lead, your line scope it's gonna be way behind the boat and you're not gonna be where the fish are at. And also, what'll happen is that 360, as it's making that you know 360 motion, it'll counteract with your lead and your lead will stop bouncing and everything doesn't fish right. So you wanna make sure and run heavier lead with your 360s. I always run either 10s or 8s for springers, ounce weights for springers, and it seems to be about the, uh, the best. In the fall, I'll run a lot of 16s and 20s because we're running deeper, a lot faster current. So, next thing, guys. We're in 18, 19 feet of water. I'm running a dropper on here. That's what I like to do. Just let out nice and slow until I feel that bottom. Just like that. That's why I have that dropper on there. And then what I'll do, is click it over and I'll take two turns off the bottom because as you're doing that 360, you don't want the thing digging in the mud. So find the bottom, take two turns off of it. That puts your super bait or a uh, 360 flasher about three feet off the bottom, right where those fish can go grab. Alrighty guys, so now that we have a rod in the right water column, I wanna talk about watching your rod and why it's so important to have a longer, softer rod. What you wanna do is you wanna watch your rod tip. You wanna have that one 1,000 thump to the rod. Just like that, one 1,000, two 1,000. That's your 360 making the 360 motion down there and they call it the heartbeat of the rod. If you have too short, stiff of a rod, you're not gonna see it work. So you wanna have a nice, soft, long rod like our Akumas here 
and have that one 1,000 thump to it, it ensures that it's acting the right way and it's putting that spin on the bait and that kick to the bait that those fish are looking for. All right, everyone, so there you have it. That's start to finish, how you get out here and fish these for springers. I know a lot of people ask all the time, like, do these work for springers? Yes. And they do, they absolutely do. So definitely yes. put them in your arsenal, definitely be using them. Thanks again so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Me and Eric yeah. got to get out here and try to catch a fish now. So yes, we're we going to put some time in. We appreciate it again. Don't forget, links down below if you guys want to check out Eric's guide service. Smash that thumbs up button. We'll see you on the river. See you guys on the water.